Hey, After Buzzers. Kevin Undergar, the executive producer of After Buzz, along with Maria Menunos. Hi, everybody. And Maria and I, as you know, have put so much time and money into mm-hmm. the After Buzz TV product and really haven't seen a lot in return. Nope, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the ways you guys can actually help us is by tuning into our new reality show, Chasing Maria Menunos. It premieres Tuesday, March 18th, 10 o'clock, 9 p.m. Central, and features me and Maria basically bickering, fighting. No. No. No, it's not just bickering and fighting. You get an inside look into my life, behind the scenes. You'll also get a behind the scenes look at AfterBuzz and an inside look at how Maria does everything in her power to shut us down Honey, because she's very cheap. That is so rude. Why would you say that? Because it's true. Oh, my okay. God. Well, I'm- anyway, guys, please tune in to Chasing Maria Menounos on Oxygen, Tuesday, March 18th at 10 p.m. We really do appreciate it. All of your support will help AfterBuzz because Maria certainly won't. <laughs> So rude. You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Bar Rescue After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Bar Rescue After Show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Bar Rescue, a new season called Hostile Takeover. We're back. I'm your host, Phil Svitek, joined alongside Kevin Undergaro. Hello, everyone. And, of course, Dorinda Barker. Hi, guys. And uh, here with us today, Chef Nick Liberato from the episode, and uh, he is Taffer approved because he got John Taffer's a permission to be on this podcast. That is correct. <laughs> and also, and also, I, I you know, I don't want to... I, don't, I hope I don't get John in trouble because I know he loves so many of the people he works with. But I believe he's... Did he or did he not say he's, he's the best I've ever worked with on this episode? Was it something like that? Yeah. You know, I, actually, Sorry, my mother called me right after she watched the episode. <laughs> she goes, did you hear what John said? He said, you're <laughs> one of the most passionate chefs that he's ever worked with. Right. And I was <laughs> Is that like, what he said? He said the most yeah. passionate. Yeah. I, I was like, wow. Yeah, I mean... I mean, you, that's a guy you want to be on his good side. You yeah. Know, you, you, well, <laughs> you know what? It's, I, it's to me, it's more than that. You, it's not a fear thing. It's a respect uh, thing. It's of course, a, it's to have uh-huh. someone like that say, you know, that about you, it says so much about of you. Of course. And you know, when I when I first met John, you know, something that really intrigued me by him was, you know, it's he's not doing this for for a show, you know, for the show and stuff. He's doing it. For out of respect for the industry, because he has such a high, you know, um, he's such a history in this business. Um, for me, I, I have there's concepts that if I was uh, I was exposed to at a very young age. Um, pulsations, which was this uh, eight club in the you 80s. You knew about pulsations, of course. I of tell course. everyone about pulsations. It was this club in the 80s that had um, this robot inside. Um, it was just an amazing concept that he put together, and I remember it from from being a kid as well as Fuddruckers, Rainforest Cafe, this uh, this little club called Fizz inside the Sheraton Hotel. But it was all in this little area where I grew up, back in Philadelphia. Was he involved in Fuddruckers and yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And rainforest and and, and number of I other mean, concepts. He's unbo- I mean, it's like what, what a find, what a find for Spike and what a find for Three Ball to get this guy. Because when you think of all the other experts, yeah, um, I dare anyone here at the table to find one in any of the fields to really have the, these credentials. Because I I didn't know that he also was part of developing NFL. Um, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday ticket, ticket, which I is, didn't know that. So <laughs> it's like, and I didn't know about the Rainforest Cafe. Yeah. And I know about Fuddruckers, but now that makes perfect sense. By the way, Fuddruckers is amazing. Amazing, yeah. And, and that Rainforest is amazing for children as well. But I mean, Fuddruckers, I still well, love. Well, my dad goes there all the time. He loves that place. Yeah, and I mean, he's just a huge inspiration to me, seeing all these this track record that he has through the years and all the success all over the world. And I mean, there's so many other concepts that I'm, clearly I'm not naming, but um, I, he's a huge inspiration to me, and it's a pleasure and an honor to work with him. 
Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's great. It has to be great. And, I, and with John, what, what always really impresses me is how much of what he does transcends bar science. And by the way, mm -hmm. um, he, the fact that he has truly created a bar science and all these theories and stuff is, is tremendous. But the fact that um, I still think I could have John run a football team and he would yeah. he'd come out okay or if he went and ran a barbershop he'd run it okay you know it's it's pretty amazing he's unbelievable at uh delegating and and seeing the big picture before it actually happens um simplifying things uh concepts that is going to be you know and the demographic and just running the numbers and all that different stuff so he's not only uh you know on the business side of things and a numbers guy but he's a super super creative person as well yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of numbers, um, so in tonight's episode, uh, you had three owners. It's a 40-40-20 split, mm -hmm. um, which I, I like the dynamic because it was the two brothers and the best friend. <coughs> and uh, you, what was your guys' kind of reaction to that? I liked it because, to be honest with you, if the two brothers were 50-50, there'd be so much more of a problem. Exactly. Yeah, and, you know, and that 20 held, well, should have held them both kind of liable for everybody didn't really hold J jerry right mm -hmm, correct jerry, quite liable for he thought he's even though he only had 40 percent, thought he had it all right which i think we go more into it we'll go more into it he kind of did because the other two kind of didn't want to but they had to do what they had to do but that 20 gives so nobody has all the power which is great and the first thing i had noticed is seeing that there's three people running this business you know that's a smart way to go about it because it's not just one person against the other there's that third person that always kind of balance out you know the decision of ultimately what needs to happen and john saw that walking right into it he's like you know what this is guys this is going to be a hostile takeover you got 20 you got 40 we can take over this place and this guy's out of control inside let's do it more or less i think i mean there's i can speak to i think why he was the way he uh, Jerry was, the way he was, but you know, again, Dorinda, like you said, we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like only in the Midwest could it work the the way it did and the way it ended up working out. And I feel Midwestern folk is just just nicer. And we're in Nebraska. Yeah, I feel like if that were in New Jersey, the two brothers would have teamed up on the other guy, or all three of them would have hated each other and not be speaking because think of all the other episodes we've had to do this. Of course. And once I saw 40, 40, 20 at the beginning, I said, oh boy. Okay, now next thing is watch. They all hate each other. No one's talking. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. There was such a sweetness to all three guys. Ex yeah. And I feel like you get that in the Midwest. Uh, More so than what you from where we're at. Oh my God, please, in LA, it's like, no, LA, they, they pretend that it's all good and forget it. They're trying yeah. to kill you behind your back. And well, then at least on East the East Coast, Coast we, we see it coming. Oh, like, you're going right at, oh, you're going at each other like maniacs. Well, he's a Philadelphia boy. So you yeah. know, yeah, right. He knows. Uh, I was raised around all that. So it's just, it's, and I was raised in an Italian family. So it's like, yeah, everybody's loud. Everybody's got a lot of emotions. And think of the family know? businesses. I know in a, so Italian, a lot of family <clears throat> businesses and food. And I know from my family. Yeah. And um, I've, just seen so many torn apart by a family business. Of course, haven't you? Oh, you know? abs absolutely, absolutely. And my father, even right now, I'm. You know, we've been there. Has been talks about opening up a restaurant and this, that. My dad's like, you know, this. I was like, you know what, Dad? I don't want you to have any part of it. I want you guys to come in, enjoy yourselves, because I've seen it happen too many times with right. all the the 16 years I've been in this business and. I've seen families get torn apart and yeah. marriages and, you know, a number of different things if you don't go about it right. Is your dad in the food business? He's not. No, he's actually uh, in construction. Gotcha. He's an Italian guy who works in construction right. in Philadelphia. <laughs> well, yeah, well, by the way, my father, rest his soul, that's what he was. Yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, my thing with your dad is I think that's very healthy or it's he's going to just write a check and walk away and of let course. you just run with the ball. Of course. And know what he's getting into. And yeah, yeah. Knows. So, uh, <laughs> but with you doing this show, having John in your corner who, you know, yeah. hopefully you'd be smart to bring in and partner in. Of course. You, the odds would be so in your favor. Absolutely. You know, of so course. Um, one of the things that, you know, with Jerry, it's anytime you're dealing with someone who's got a drinking problem. Um, I don't know if he's, if he's, I would guess he's an alcoholic, but it, it it seems that I always say anytime you're over the age of say 28, 29, you're drinking and you get those really, ever notice when people get those really heavy eyes? Mm. Yeah. It's a problem. It's not yeah. just uh, the fact that you like to party. And it seemed like he had a real problem with it. And one of the things that 
goes hand in hand with that is narcissism. It's the cornerstone of that disease. So that's why he would probably feel the way he did. But on the other hand, you can kind of see how he felt because he was also, seemed like he was putting in the most hours, right? I feel like he was there all the time. And I think that's what it is. And he, I, you could tell when certain, when certain, the hostile takeover happened, he felt you ganged up on me and I'm here all the time. You guys aren't you, here. You don't know how to shut this off. You don't yeah, shut that off. Exactly. And sometimes that becomes a little bit of a crutch too. Like purposely, that's why I have to drink because it's so much pressure here. And, you know, um, anyway, Nick, you probably could speak I to mean, it better because you were there. Yeah. I mean, where we were, it was, you know, it's a very cold area. You know, there's not a lot going on. You know, this place is in the, the corner of like a parking lot. So walking up to these places, you really don't know what to expect. And walking, you know, into that spot was, you know, and, and meeting these guys, you know, there was a lot of friction. You know, of course, exactly what you just said. This guy spends all the time in the world there. And then all of a sudden he's got, you know, John and the other, you know, his brother and, and the other partner out in the parking lot spying on him and then coming inside when he's completely lit. I mean, the guy yep. was really drunk. Right. And I mean, there was tables getting knocked over. He was saying really insulting things to girls. I mean, he was just out of control. And John walked in there. It was just he's like, this has got to stop. And, uh, yeah, it really was a hostile takeover. And, and when he left, when he was told to leave, he went on a rant for like ever out in that parking lot. I mean, just, I mean, this is horse crap. He just felt completely um, deceived by everyone around him, his family, his friends, his customers. And um, yeah, I felt, I, I felt bad for him, but you know, I, that's ultimately, we, we're not coming into this to, to make friends, you know, we're coming in here to like save a business and, and we may not say the things that you're going to like, but you know, that's, you know, at, at the end, you know, clearly it was, it was a happy ending. To me, he was, he was the transformation in this episode. I mean, he really was. <clears throat> I didn't think he would make it. No, I didn't think he, first of all, I didn't realize he had a girlfriend. And she was there. I saw her in, in one of the shots early in the episode. She's kind of trying to break things up. She's brunette girl. Yeah, yeah. brunette girl, brunette Italian girl, very nice girl. She actually gave me the biggest hug at the end because he did have such an amazing transformation. Oh my God. Going, uh, I mean, for, for Jerry, you know, there was a part like in the beginning, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but where he said, uh, thank you, John. No one's ever said to me. John had said, I'm so proud of you, you know, and it was like, I think, I mean, that was like for any viewer to like see that you actually felt the feelings in that poor guy that like no one ever like believed in or never said, I'm proud of you. And it seemed like he had lost his father at an early age and just, that's, it was sad. But it, it, that's it, what it felt like to me is the dad wasn't around. And then when the dad was around, he probably didn't hear it. And, exactly. um, and I cried three different times during this episode. It yeah. was so really? emotional. Oh my God, how could you not when no, he said I did that? Too. I mean, I did when he, too. The first time was like... when he said that to John, when he's like, you know, no one's ever believed in me. It was like, oh, I still get choked up. It crushed me it. when I, when he said that. It completely crushed me. And, you know, I don't ever want to, you know, and, and it's tough for me in that particular situation where they had sold all their kitchen equipment beforehand. So there was nothing in the kitchen. And... You know, John had put in all this new kitchen equipment, and then he, Jerry, is the guy that ultimately was end up cooking in the kitchen. And here's a guy that said on TV, like, I go, to, you know, I go to this place to eat fast food. Like, I don't ever cook anything. And his girlfriend had filled me in on that. By the end of those couple days, he was so inspired. He was so impressed with himself that I had just taken him to a whole other level to like he just didn't understand that food could be made in that way and that he could be that passionate with a certain craft and like I was saying about his girlfriend she gave me the biggest hug and she was like thank you you not only saved him you just saved him in such a way it made him yeah. give him such a different outlook on life mm -hmm. and you know I'm coming in from California going to Omaha and you know it's <laughs> like I'm gonna I'm giving him all these different ideas and talking about my life and the different places I traveled and people just get stuck in this rut just kind of like the normal everyday thing and just don't get passionate about life to, all the time. to take him to the next you level get stuck in that rut and mm -hmm. you see it a lot and you just you need sometimes everyone just I say this to me all the time but sometimes you just need someone to believe in you. You know, I'll say it a lot of times. I see, I see a lot of our hosts here. I'm like, you know, they just need someone to someone who just who yeah. believes in them just to get in, give them an opening. Give You know, and then a lot of them will blow that shot. We see it every week with John. But this was one that he didn't. 
Yeah, no, I mean, he, uh, it was, it was, I, I didn't see it. I mean, I didn't think he was going to stop drinking. And John was just like, listen, I'm out of here. If you take another drink, you, I'm, we're taking the keys. And then, you know, ultimately it went, got to the point where John said he was proud and the keys got put back in his hand. And, you know, the transformation just, you know, it That's just so started. Weird. And the guy really put his head down in the kitchen. I, I was so impressed, more than most of the people I've worked with on the show, just because he is a guy that didn't work in the kitchen, came from such was, a... Was a you know, drunkard and such a problem. And, and for them to go through the stress test, and ironically, him to be the hero, which yeah. not, we don't, in the history of Bar Rescue, we don't see a lot of heroes come out of the stress test. He came, right. The dog came out the hero, yeah. and they were the... Exactly. They were the um, the clowns. And you notice there was no communication because when they ran out of glasses, there were glasses there. They were in the back. Right. But they were. He didn't know they ran out of glasses. Am I correct? That's correct. So once that happened, you're like, wow, there is no communication. Because why didn't they say when they know that he's been there all the time, wouldn't they say, hey, do we have glasses? Do we have this? But no, that was never said. And I don't understand that when you know that your bar is going to be full that night. Yeah, and you know we really had to simplify things. Yeah, you know, I, I did a chicken sandwich, um, you know, and I was even cautious about doing chicken because of the cross contamination, and you know, but I was very clear with him exactly what needed to be done, how it needed to be done, and there was points where he got really worked up, and I'm a little guy, and Jerry's a big dude in that <laughs> kitchen. Like there was points I thought he was going to pick up one of the, the refrigerator and throw it, but I was just like. I, they had they had me on on there going calm down man just relax take a breath take a deep breath because things get worked up in your kitchen you got me hollering at you you know I'm expediting all the tickets going out and the, you know we have food coming back because it was getting ran to the wrong tables they weren't used to this type of service this type of direction in that place you know they they didn't have table numbers or or you know that type of urgency to get food out to the table so that that's that gets people worked up you know well when they Phil should we talk more about the recon. Um, well, I wanted to talk in terms of the, re I mean, yeah, sure. Let's talk about it. You, it was interesting to note that, you know, they didn't have the kitchen stuff, you right. know, from. I was and, shocked by that when they he sold, when Jerry I was, sold I've never equipment. heard of that before ever, ever in my life that what no. that he just went and sold everything to pay. Well, I can understand paying the rent. But he went and they sold. sold a money maker to pay. Yeah. 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 I was just, and it was just, it's sad when you go into these spaces. I mean, and there's been other episodes where we didn't have a kitchen. <laughs> we have we're in a blank space, and we more or less got to put a whole kitchen in there. And this place went from a place where the girls would do their makeup and whatever else would go on in these dead spaces to all of a sudden now being a spot that's going to be generating revenue, and they've got to learn how to do it properly. Uh, kind of a bar rescue first too, where we put in the kitchen before and a renovation. Oh yeah, yeah, that's never happened before. No. And let's let's talk about the uh, the beer system because that. The you know, I know it was, it was, oh. that wasn't your necessary area, but no, of course, you know, and I've to be let to let you know, I've worked every position there's to work in the business. I've done cocktails, I've run, you know, I've done every different position. But you know, John had pointed out he saw those plastic, you know, attachments to it, and then he was comparing it to the turbo Turbos, tap, yeah. turbo tap system, where you know how he was saying how it's not the right temperature, um, you know, it's it's just a it just gathers so much bacteria, and it, and you can smell it, you can see it. I see, and by the way, it's one of the reasons why That's, most bars I don't drink draft beer because they don't clean the lines, mm -hmm. and so the mold and everything else forms. Exactly, which of course was forming on theirs. Absolutely, and there was, I mean, underneath the bar, I, a little later they had seen that there was all these fruit flies that had accumulated with all the sugars and and things, and it's amazing, you know, like John's gone through so many of these bars, like he he knows exactly. You know what to look for, where you know where to find this, or where to find that, and you know it's it's just it's unbelievable. You know the things we find in these places. The, the, this particular episode, I mean, I've been in this business, I've worked in restaurants, 16, 20 years, and I have never smelled a more vile smell than in this particular place. Oh wow, and we didn't really touch on that. And I mean, we've, oh, that we've was going to be my question. I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. Oh, Why no, don't you? No, no, no. No, please go ahead because like, we. How did it smell? Because there, there were so many other because, issues that yeah. we were dealing with that we never really got to that. You know, it was it's their grease pit. So we, you know, uh, Trevor Fry was in the front doing his training, and I was just getting started to do the training in the kitchen. And you know, I I have smelled some terrible things. You know, I've done whole animal butchery. I've got a stomach. I can you know I can handle certain things, but this smell just did not smell right. And 
it was their grease pit. And I said, hey, when's the last time you guys clean your grease pit? He goes, what do you mean? And I said, that box back there. Well, they had not cleaned this thing in upwards to like five years. Oh. And and this thing, as they showed in the graphics on the show, they do a great illustration of what happens. Um, when that thing opened up and I was really happy that they didn't, I, I mean, I almost completely lost it. It was such a vile smell. And when those Rotor Rooter guys came in and cleaned everything out, it was like seeing liposuction being done, like the way all the stuff that was coming out of there. And it shut down production for like two hours or, or more That's because so it was such a horrible smell. People were like, uh, <laughs> we couldn't do it. It was just, we couldn't train. It, we lost like a day of training. It was, it was terrible. Um, I just just when you picked it up and I I could oh that's why when I was sitting I was I, like I said I watched it um, one and a half times and I shut it off right after mm -hmm. that the second time I was like oh I can't I can't I can't it just kills me when I see people just lose their passion and and um, s being sanitary just to be coming in that space every single day and to get little hints of that smell and just to look over it and, and that gives people this hack mentality and it, it just oh, kills me because I've worked in, I've worked amen. in restaurants where the chef will be like okay clean down and this is in the middle of service and we're scrubbing things clean down and then we go right back to service and it's like oh my kind of chef yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We, but I also, you, we've worked with we've actually worked with a couple of them but, yeah, War, I, but Warren was very much like that very yeah, yeah very like Warren that. Schwartz we both worked with him and he yeah he was very much and then you guys at the end of the night forget about it, would not be able to leave until that place was spotless. but I also you guys I think it's it's an under rated part of any business what business do you walk into uh whether the bathroom's a mess the office is a mess anything it's just such an indication of even people you hire if you're going to hire an assistant and their car is a mess inside that you know it's it there's such a healthy habit to cleanliness and organization it leads to so many great things and and no one in business ever tells you that no and you know what you when know? i walk into a restaurant you know i'll usually walk in i'm gonna go wash my hands the first thing i look at Otherwise, is the bathroom don't, okay, so Marissa knows this. Stephen, you've heard me say this here in the booth. I've said it many times. Go look at the bathroom. I look at the bathroom you, because you'll, you'll say it it's all. a clean tell sign of how they keep their place mm -hmm. and, and more or less what you're going to be getting. And, I mean, when I was managing restaurants, when I was working as a chef in restaurants, it's just I would con we would walk by, and I, if I would see somebody walk by – that didn't pick something up it's like hey this is our this is our bathroom you know this is where the guests are are using sure. they're going to judge us on this you know you gotta we got to take pride and not only you, you can't there's no area to overlook that's because right that is when you're going to be judged and then that's and when also but even training your people that mentality so now everyone's in that mentality of uh, but any i just think eh, of course food especially but any business and i i've i've worked for people i you know in my days in the carnival business i remember the, the those guys <laughs> would be mad at me because I was so into the cleaning in the organization. Yeah. I'd be like, we don't make any money off that. I'm like, no, actually, dumbass, you do. You don't realize it. I know because you're all about the money and your sweaty, greedy effing palm. Yeah, yeah. But you don't understand that all of these things that I'm doing, these extra steps I'm taking, it is making you money. We're not losing inventory. Yeah. We're, 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 we're having more repeat customers. Um, we're not having theft from our employees because we know where everything is. There's just so many great things that come out of it. People treat their jobs nowadays when they don't have passion for it like just something to do in between their weekends. They, they just don't have passion. It's this hack mentality. which so we, call, you, we call it civilian mentality. Civilian mentality. Civilian okay. mentality. Uh, don't talk to a civilian. I always say to these guys, from, thir <laughs> from Thursday night till Monday morning, a civilian is checked out. A civilian from 5 o'clock on during the week <laughs> checked out from nine to five of that nine to five you're lucky if you get maybe two two and a half hours of work out of a civilian between the emails the facebooks yeah the texting to their friends that's the civilian mentality but then the same civilian is wondering why they're not wealthy why they're not successful mm -hmm. and begrudging those people who are who actually go to work and are doing the work and putting in the hours so okay. yeah don't to, get me on that, that point one. i want to talk about uh the girl who quit mm-hmm you know, because she was like, I, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up to oh, work late they, hours. Yeah, great, great. Uh, and, you know, luckily they, they um, were right in their decision. They said, hey, she said she was willing to do this, and clearly she's not. She's gone. Sure, yeah. And, and, you know, I just find it door. interesting that she did it during the show. You know what I mean? Why would you do it? Why would you pick that time to do it? I don't, think she, I don't think she picked. She just didn't have the three hours to give, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean... 
we were, I mean, there were so many more things to focus on and people weed themselves out and yeah, you know, they they always situation, do. in a situation like that. Always and the, the restaurant business, the bar business is a revolving door. So you really, I mean, I, I've started up restaurants and I've looked at everyone and been like, Everyone, welcome. We're very happy to see you here. But, you know, probably 40% of you guys won't be here in a couple of weeks because, you know, you're not going to fit for what we need. It might not be the right fit for you. But, you know, you just figure those things so, you out. Know what? It's, it's, uh, when you care about, you know, there's, there's so many secrets to life. And a lot of them I'm, I feel like I have because I'm older. But and I've been on both sides. I've been the guy who didn't care. I've yeah. been that guy. Yeah. And life is so much harder. When you don't care, when you're putting in minimal work, yes. when it's about the, you know, texting your friends or making personal <coughs> calls, the day goes by longer. Mm -hmm. You're spending more time trying to dodge the work than do, there's more time spent doing that. There's more stress involved doing that. And you're always looking over your back for when you're going to get fired. You never really get ahead. But when you when you go to work, and for me it was after 23 where I really got it, when you go to work and you just give everything you can almost like sports if you were playing a game you know you just give every part of yourself to whatever company or whatever project so many good things come to you yeah and i was always so rewarded yes there were bosses i'm sure that took advantage of me mm -hmm. um but far outweighed by all the great things that came out of it when i if i were that girl and said okay well yes my college is number one but when i'm here I'm here. Everything I can yeah. give this place, I'm going to give it because you, you never know when you graduate from college and now you need a full-time job or you need a shift on the weekends or you need, yeah. you never know. I recommend to everyone try and wear as many different hats as you possibly oh, can in life because, oh, yeah. you know, it's, I mean, without, I, without question that I've learned how to do so many different things. And, you know, I knew I loved cooking when I was so passionate about it. I invest my money in like three things, um, cooking or uh, dining, cookbooks and traveling because they're all things that revert right back to my career and inspire me to do better and and to keep going so and they're they're good investments for me and it's just cooking for me it, it creates experiences for people and i saw that at a very very young age sitting at the dinner table growing up in an italian family everyone having an amazing time together and i got so inspired at such a young age and i just wanted this to continue and i wanted this to be part of my life and and food is something that brings everyone together you're creating experiences i'm always the last one to sit down you know if you ever yeah. if i'm ever cooking for you guys that's it's awesome. like it's like i just want to that's the payoff for me to see everyone have a great time and to create that experience for the guests you know? so cool i love it's inspiring to hear you talk about it because I, I by the way i don't like cooking but <laughs> i know it's one i mean I'm, i do the cleaning i'm always the one that does all the cleanup in the kitchen i actually i as weird as it is i enjoy doing that but i love people who see it as an art form who want to create and create the experience. It's it's because yeah. I know my girlfriend. She cooks. The my my uh, girlfriend's mom is a professional cook. The grandfather was a chef in Greece, and for them, it is an art form. Yeah, and it's oh, the it's same a huge thing. It's, art form. it's so I great love to do it. But I see when people view it as an art form. You know, I know yeah. it's an art form, but when I I really dig when the 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 chef sees it that way. That difference between I, I always say difference between a cook and a chef. Yeah, and that's I, it. When we yeah. were just talking earlier, we were talking about Italy, and you know, I I went there for three months to cook and work in all the different regions and i was working with people that you know they just do this for their life they're like older italian ladies and italian men and uh, making fresh pastas and bread and going out with the fishermen and going chingali hunting and going out for truffles and just seeing people that do this stuff in their everyday life you know it just it ins i went there for inspiration to learn you know new techniques and just get inspired and more than anything get back to my roots but i'll find that anywhere i go if i'm in costa rica colombia australia there's there's all these amazing cultures all throughout the world and if you can grab a little something from each culture and bring it back and apply it to your everyday life you know it's that's an amazing, amazing thing. thing though to be able to go and to do those things and a lot of people don't do it for whatever reason and those are the people that get stuck like the jerry's and the steve's and them and so they they feel that they're stuck in what they're doing mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah and i'm i was really happy to see him come around in the kitchen and and feel really good i could see him getting pumped up and you could see that on the episode when he's getting really He's getting really mad because some of the food had gotten dropped off the, the wrong tables and he put all that time in to put it out and, and I'm explaining to him, listen, that food's been sitting in the window. It's dying. That chicken lived for nothing. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and and, and I, there's a lot of people in the Midwest or, or people that when they go shopping, they just grab that thing of meat. They don't care where it came from, if it's organic or what. But it's like, 
you know, it's like when you take an animal's life, you know, I, I've taken things full circle because it, it allows me to put that much more pride in when I'm butchering something, when I'm preparing it, you just have that much more love for, for life cycle. And I made him look at life so much differently. I, I we, we changed his life that episode. It was, it was super inspiring to see such a turnaround. By the way, what a guy. great way for you, Nick, to chef, to put it that way. As I never thought of it that way. He looked you know? at me like I was crazy. Yeah. He goes, what well, are you talking about? Yeah, but about? I think he probably, you it resonated. It, it did. You it know? did. Because with me, that re really registers. It's not just a piece of trash. This thing was, a life was taken for it to make this chicken sandwich. And on top of it, there. look at the bacon. That's, you know, that's a whole other animal. It's just, and I, ex I sat down and throughout the prep and the training with him, I started explaining that stuff. And no one had ever talked to him like that or spent that time to talk to him about something that he never took pride in. That guy was just going through drive throughs before. Uh, and I sat down and we, there was so, there's always so many more items that we cook on the show that, you know, this show only has so much time to, sh you know, put out so many different things. But you know, there was probably six different potatoes we actually did for that on top of the chili stew, you know, the chili fries and the chicken sandwiches. Oh, the so, potato thing looked amazing. Oh, it did. That looked was so good. And, you know, it's like I've got to dumb down a lot of the things that I do. I mean, I can't come in there and start I like doing, when you do, uh, though. No, but I like when you do because I'm going to a bar. I want that kind of food. Exactly. And, you know, and that's that's what I've learned from John. He's like, listen, Nick, you know, I'll, I'll come with like a few different ideas and he'll say, that's not going to work, Nick. That's not going to think. Think all American. Think simple. Think, you know, and, you know, when, when we're doing the pot of coffee, you know, it's like that's that's when we're when John's like just like, you know, he's a genius. Like, I mean, when he knows what the, he looks at the demographic, he sees what other businesses are in town. If there's an Air Force base, if there's a military base or whatever is going on, you know, he he makes it happen. So, let's, uh, you know, let's talk about that concept, you know, mm -hmm. um, which I thought, you know, in terms of the remodel, I really love, for me, I love that the planes and then the plane wing table. Yeah. It's just genius. <laughs> and the same guy that had done the one at um, when we were in Fort Bragg, when we did the, um, it was the, the military, when we did the big tank that was inside oh, the yeah. place. That was the same guy who, who did that. But it's a really amazing process seeing that stuff be done. I'll pop my head in every now and then and kind of watch the transformation. It's pretty amazing. But the, the airplane wing was cool, and we had, like, the little... Uh, the Moscow Mules. Um, there were some excellent cocktails that were put on the menu, and the spuds were a really, you know, great fit for you know. It's a it's a very versatile item. A potato. It it can be done a thousand different ways, you know. And to simplify things to where, hey, we roast these potatoes. They're finished. Now let's just think about the different toppings on each. And you know, and I taught him how to set up the kitchen and how to execute those things you know properly and to do a run near um a base it seemed like a no-brainer that this place would be successful yeah yeah i mean everyone really took on to it i mean everyone that was dining there for both the stress test and you know on the reopening everyone loved it and after the episode aired i, I got hit up with so many people like you never made me any of those potatoes. You made me like <laughs> bouillabaisse and like steak frites and like and like you know and chicken matone and you're doing this and that. And I'm just like I know. I was just like I. It's it's tough for me to simplify things, but it's something as simple as potato can be so appealing to yeah, everyone in America. So good. And it's so good. Uh. And we did some fun ones. We did a pataco. We did a PBLT. We did the uh, we did one with a really cool um, like stew on it. There was the uh, the buffalo chicken one. That was the best. Buffalo um, chicken was awesome. But yeah, I mean, it, it was stew. fun. Stew. There's one with stew. Yeah, what? you know what? I know that one. <laughs> that one was my personal favorite. But the buffalo wing was really cool. They were all great. You know, there was one with the the PBLT. That one was fun. It was it was a good time doing all that food, and it was fun. It was a great time working with with Jerry, and and seeing him uh, really pull through in that kitchen. And and it's a tough thing working as a chef, working as a cook, whatever you want to label it. When you're working, and when you got those tickets popping up. And people are waiting for their food, and and you know the night is pumping. Your energy gets pumped up, and I mean it's just it's full you know it's full throttle from there on out. So f for him to have survived me in the kitchen, I was being pretty cool with him because I knew I was dealing with someone that, you know, had just stopped drinking, had never had any experience in the kitchen. So it was you know it was a lot. Which is interesting, and not to like bring a downer on anything but to stop drinking and to start working in a kitchen of all places because that it has it's a incredible. high it has oh a my high God. Like usually you want to someone who's getting off alcohol or any kind of addiction 
you want to, I always say, let them hit singles. Yeah. Meaning like, okay, mm-hmm. today you're going to just take out the trash. <laughs> you know, you're not going <laughs> to sure, go and yeah. run a, Now learn how to be a cook, run a kitchen. It's really incredible the, tra- the transformation this guy went through. But for him, he put this business in a different perspective when he was put back in that kitchen because it made him look at the business differently, have a whole new respect for food, for himself, himself. for his business, and and connecting that, building that camaraderie between the front and the back of the house, which yeah, they now need to do having a kitchen. Because, you know, the ta- I like John's little nugget, you know, the tables, they're darker. You yes. Know, which, which lighter ones yeah. are fast food. And, so. and again, to, to show you just continue to learn the, the, bar, the science of everything. Which it's, is- it's amazing when I, when I talk to, you know, business owners all over the country and the, they will just go on a binge like you're watching any other show and they'll just be like, oh my God, I'm getting ready to open a place. I'm watched like 40 episodes of Bar Rescue so and, you and, and, you know, or buying the, John's book that's now the come book, out. John's book is great. And then on his website, he has all these multimedia um, things that you can you can buy, download, and then he's going to start Taffer TV. And I, I would be, just as I could do with as a filmmaker, um, I've taken every class, I still do, but... Um, I would. It's what a short investment. He's got Taffer Talk. And yeah, but, but, but yeah, I was going to bring up Taffer Talk because um, it was trending number three I, on a Sunday night to be number three on Twitter worldwide. No, and at one point he was number one, Phil. And we, okay, I'm, I'm going off of what Nicole. That's tweeted. excellent. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah. Nicole, his but we wife. have Walking Dead right now. Oh. There you go. That's probably why. Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. <laughs> Hostile Wait, he's takeover. Doing okay. What he's doing, Taffer TV. That disgusts Ta- me. He does Taffer TV. It's going to be a, it's a subscription service where if you're a bar owner, you're, you're going to be able to subscribe and then get a series of tips, weekly updates, and things like that. That is brilliant. Yes, yeah, that's, that's really and cool. And again, if you love your business, and this is how you want to succeed, <clears throat> how you don't invest in, in every chance at succeeding, you know, beyond me. People it's, don't do it. But it's sink or swim. Educate yourself as much as you can, and we you have that resource, use it. To, to, you know, one of the things that I found, John's underrated genius, and why he's so much more than a bar guy, uh, was once again proven on this episode for me, was when he put up the picture of the father, the, the late father. Yes. In his Air Force office, and he said to him, you're going to look at that picture, and something effective. You're going to look at that picture, and it's going to remind you, you you're not going to drink. You're not going to disrespect yeah. him. Yeah, don't disrespect your father because right. he's always looking and at you. And John know. knew. Yeah. I'm, I swear he knew to put that picture up that that really would affect him, yep. that he would have the father's eyes watching him mm-hmm. and keeping him on track. And again, this is just the genius of John. It, I mean, and you saw both the brothers break down at that point. And I mean, uh, amongst a lot of other people oh. that were all on that set. It that was, was the second time I broke down. The third was when him and John embraced. I mean, end. I was looking at a lot of, you know, everyone on the crew. I was, I mean, it was, it was very touching when you, when you see a picture like that get put up on the wall. I mean, that, that means a lot. I know when I, I have a picture of my grandfather hanging in my kitchen and it's just, it's inspiration to me to yeah. like just do better in life. For the people that aren't here, so you, it just makes you want to do better. But he, and John, but John knew that this, yeah. that, that there was something with between him and the father. He knew that the father was a serviceman. He knew that this was going to be a great area of temptation mm-hmm. for Jerry to fall off the wagon and go back to those old habits. And, yeah. And what better way to, and then for him to point it out, it's like, man, yeah, he's something, Mister Taffer. <laughs> he's something. He's 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 truly he's just an amazing guy. I mean, he's a lot of fun. Um, you know, him being from Queens, New York, and I'm from Philadelphia, we hit it off very quickly in the beginning. But, you know, any moment I have with him, I'm, I'm constantly trying to learn as much as I possibly can yeah. and get mentored as the best possible because he's got nothing but amazing advice, a lot of experience, and, uh, you know, and, you know, he's an inspiration to us all now. Yeah, it's great. It's, uh, and we, we just continue to spread the word with everyone. I just keep telling people it's more than a bar show. Yeah, yeah absolutely. How'd you like working with the new bar guy? Because he's new. He's a newbie. Trevor. Yeah, Trevor Trevor's Fry. new. I, I, you know what? He kind of made me, when I was watching the episode, I felt like I was watching um, the movie The Hobbit because he, he was <laughs> like eight feet tall and he made yeah. me look like three feet tall. <laughs> I, the guy is huge. Super cool guy. Works. Um, he's out of DC. Mm-hmm. Very, very talented guy. Him and I know a lot of people in the industry. And, uh, you know, I love cocktails. 
um, just as much as he does. And we were just doing nothing but talking about different types of spirits. And I learned a great deal from him working with him on that show. So that he's a very, very cool guy. It was, a, it was great working with him. Yeah, he seemed like a nice guy and he seemed like he knew what he was doing. And boy, when she, who, oh, it, so it was a, BC, was it BC? Yes, it was. And it she was said, F you. And I was surprised he did not say, get out of here. <laughs> you, know, you know what I really loved what Trevor did? I think it was, the, one of the best points he proved was when she put the napkin down. Yeah, she. Yeah, oh, it was yeah. when he put the napkin down. He's like, he's like, now if the, is that really how you give your nap? Put a napkin down in front of a guest because that pretty much means, f you. Here's your drink, and I was just like, that's great. I mean, that's a great well, point. Even it's when just she like, put the glass down, oh, like she yeah. like slammed the guest. I was like, why would you do yeah. that? Are you having an issue with this woman right now that we just don't know about? <sighs> right. Because it's, why? It amazes me when people get super disrespectful towards the experts. Yeah, because we're going in there to help you. I mean, you should, you're really lucky to have us here right now because otherwise we're going back to, you know, our normal everyday lives and you're never, you know, you're not yeah. going to see us again. So it's, um, it's, it's amazing. But, you know, they'll, they'll get humbled pretty quick and they'll see when you, after pointing out everything that they've done wrong, you know, they'll, they'll come around. Have we had any updates on this bar? Have you, Nick, have you been in touch with them at all? Uh, you know, Jerry actually, um, he emailed me to wish me Merry Christmas, and he's Aww. a super nice guy. And it seems like he's he's really kept on top of the business, and sales have gone up dramatically. It's It seems like everything's going great, but I haven't had any direct contact with him okay. other than just getting that one email. Nice. And have you been in touch with any of the other past people? Uh, yes. Actually, the guys from Bungalow Bar. In uh, New York City, which was the Hurricane Sandy. Oh episode. yeah, I knew oh. you would. Yeah, John says he's still close with those guys. I'm, too. Uh, yeah, Terrence and D and all those guys. They're, I mean, honestly, I, that was one of the most amazing experiences I have ever had on this show. And I, I think a lot of people on, uh, that are involved with the Bar Rescue Crew will, will say the same. Both cameramen, uh, you know, everyone involved. It was just such an amazing thing i mean for me it hit home for me because um we my family has a beach house i grew up on the east coast um seaside park in new jersey and our whole my whole neighborhood got completely destroyed going into that area and seeing what happened there it was it was terrifying i mean it was it was terrible but these guys it was a different show because it, you know there was a group of people yeah. that were have a successful business yeah and this that one was really on you guys so that I, one when, I when john that when john started do, you know manual labor he's like i gotta i gotta go to it it was all hands right, john on. with the left hand doing it's a the huge painting. project <laughs> and we had rain that kind of messed up but we were oh yeah there was a it was a big project there was a lot going on but that it, flag yeah. That flag. Oh, I'm getting chills. It's yeah, I've got that hanging in my in my my house actually here here in California. Like, I mean, the the frame is made out of the boardwalk was destroyed, and the picture was was taken three days after 9/11. And I I actually lost my best friend in 9/11. So when they oh my God, when they I'm sorry. when they handed me that thing, I like I broke down in tears. I remember yeah, I remember one of the story producers like came up to me with his cell phone camera. And I'm just, I like grabbed his hand and I put it down. I was like, dude. Come on now. I was, like, <laughs> okay. I was like, this is, but it was, those guys are, I mean, very strong Irish family, but they have a lot of class and they're very old school. And the thing, you know, just the experience we had with that group of people was, was unbelievable, amazing. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. That's, that's one place actually I make, going to make a trip to when I go in May. Yeah. When I, cause I'm going in May to uh, the first, first few days in June and I'm making sure that I go there. That's one of the places. Yeah. And yeah. then when are we all going to the Pirates Bar? 43 minutes in. There you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> we had that far. <laughs> How did as we, far we as would, I know. This is the first. This is the longest I think long, we've ever gone without talking day. about Pirates. You've seen that episode. Of I course. Correct? Absolutely. We every. It's a crazy guy with the weird eye. <laughs> oh, no. That's when Paul I, wanted Mike. No, what I pee. No, I think it's Mike. I oh, think it's Mike. Mike. Oh, I we just wrong. call him what I pee. <laughs> I made the mistake. It's what I mean, Mike. But yeah. he was the best. I mean, he had heart. He tried. Like, I, I loved him. The, the rest it of It was hysterical, yeah. though. I mean, it seems like that episode was really stuck out amongst a lot of them because it was just. I think amongst anything on television. Right. Whatever, and then yeah. those guys ended up I mean they went like ballistic they changed the whole concept back they reverted it right back oh, we know. they yeah. burned him. they burned they, it all they burned <laughs> they took a dummy and put a picture of John Tapper on and burned him in effigy yeah but you know I, I know John would probably see that and just be like he'd probably be I mean I just, here's here's what Phil why are they how are they still existing I don't 
don't know. Because I think it's the same. She just one. keeps running a credit card. Probably, probably. Um, I mean, it, it, I think people are going there just like they're going to Legoland now. They're just like, oh my god, there's Pirates Bar. Let's go there. It's like that's from Bar yeah. Rescue. This is yeah. such a popular show now. These places are all becoming destination areas, and um, I mean, like the place down in New Orleans. Um, I mean, that place is. Oh, those guys. That's are the great. one, the barbershop yes. one. Yeah. Yes. Those, those guys, guys are. Those are guys. Great. I mean, they're making. Yo, Michael Chick, the star of the Shield. I was asking him if he knew about this show, and he said, "He goes, yeah, I do." He goes, "I was just at one of their bars. I was down in uh, in New Orleans, and I I was in a barber chair getting shots, and did." Oh, did he there do you that? Go. Yeah, that's there cool. You go. Very there cool. You go. <laughs> what other ones can you say that have become a destination that you know of? Um, well, certainly Bungalow Bar for sure because it sits right there, you know, on the water and overlooks Manhattan. It's it's a gorgeous view. So I, I know that it's become a very very popular spot. Um, uh, the one in Fort Bragg, um, which is the um, it, that was the guys that. God, I, I'm, I'm like blanking on the name of it right now. But um, that place has definitely become a big destination area in Fort Bragg with all the military guys. Um, the all in one. I don't need I, I have no contact oh. with those guys or to oh. know what's going on there. But, I, you know, clearly that that got a lot of exposure and you still hear all in. You know, he was that guy. He oh, was we talked and, to him. And awesome. We yeah. talked to him. Did we you? interviewed him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, you know, that was that was an interesting experience for me being on that one because that guy was he, he really pissed me off. Like he was just all he was scattered brained. And I can't stand when somebody can't multitask especially having the position as gm which he did and he, he was such a uh d-bag more like it <laughs> <laughs> but he was uh yeah he was uh, that guy was out of control but um he was, he was everything but all in he was yeah he was everything well, but all yeah. in. well i think he had some other person some other issues that yeah. were going on but i that think he could yeah Focus. Yeah, but I think sorties will definitely be. A, um, I know it'll be a destination spot for that area, being such a big inspiration to the the Air Force Base and the fact that you know, clearly Bar Rescue John Taffer had a part to do with it. And you know, and there's not a lot going on in that area, so people seem very excited for the new concept that that was put in. So, Phil, do we have predictions for next week? Were we able to see what was going on next week? Uh, After Buzz TV predictions. Keeping it short, Stephen. I like it. Wow. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't see the previews for it, but um I'm excited. Uh, you know, up ahead we've we've got kind of uh, f interesting episodes. I I don't know if I can mention how and what they are. Just we yet. better not know. No. But John was telling but us but he's but really excited. He says there's there's some to top the pirates bar. Oh, excellent, yeah. excellent, so really, in the cockroach bar. Oh, absolutely. So, and real quick, anything that you want to talk about, anything you want to promote, anything that you have going on, besides the fact that uh, you like to go to um, grammar schools and uh, show children how to cook, which I That's thought amazing. was amazing. Wow. Yeah, for the past eight years, my wife, Jennifer, is actually a school teacher in uh, El Rodeo Hawthorne School District. And I go in there and I teach a couple classes of students, you know, how to cook. You know, I'm not using any heating elements, but what I'm ultimately trying to inspire them on is fresh produce, the farmer's market, Farm eat, fair. eating mm -hmm. healthy and getting inspired when I was like when I was a kid, I was working in the Italian market down South Philadelphia. So I grew up kind of working down like farmer's markets. But um, it's such just such a young age. And, you know, for kids to get inspired with food and so crucial and and there's kids that are now like have, are now in college that still remember when I came to their school and are like, oh my God, there's Chef Nick. How are you? Oh, I see, saw it, that's so you cool. know. And it's like it's really cool. And and I just jump at it. And I'm actually getting ready to do it again with my wife. So um, it's fun. And I have a huge respect for teachers. And anytime I can take the kids off their hands for a little bit, <laughs> and I'll tell you, I, I get exhausted. Like after spending a couple hours with all those kids, I'm, I'm like exhausted. But yeah, I have a catering business called Caledelphia. And I do private parties, big events all throughout Los Angeles, as well as, you know, all over the country. Do you have so. the web website for it? Uh, Caledelphia. No, no. My website's actually getting worked on currently. So, okay. But soon. All right. Twitter, All right. And how Twitter, many, uh, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. We're we're on Twitter together. Yeah, we're, yeah. <laughs> you're, we're Caledelphia. Caledelphia, and Twitter. and I'm also on Instagram, uh, Chef Nikki. Chef Nikki, good. On, on Instagram. 
Okay, Dorinda, where do we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Lula Cherry Films and then on Instagram at Dorinda B1. Okay, I'm Matt Undergaro, and uh, if you're a fan of Bar Rescue, check out my interview with John Taffer for After Buzz <laughs> TV Spotlight On series. It's uh, on YouTube and also on iTunes. And <laughs> I learned a lot in the interview, so I'm hoping you guys will too. And uh, we're going to obviously be doing Bar Rescue for the rest of the season. We do have other guests lined up, but thank you, Nick, for coming on. Thank, thank you so you. much for I'm having so me, guys. I was so excited. I was so, so excited about it. And, of course, you guys heard it at the top, but just one more time. Chasing Maria Menounos, Woo! Tuesday, March 18th, 10, 9 Central. Uh, you're not going to want to miss it. Why? Because it features After Buzz, and it features amazingness. Oh, and an uh, Undergaro over here. A lot of battles. <laughs> to, save, <laughs> to save After Buzz, needless to say. Anyway, yeah, check it out, please. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.